By Jove, we've done it! Nature's perfect killing machine! Ladies, gentlemen, and pals of all ages, Power World has an incredible amount of depth to it, especially for an early access game. There's just a million things to do, collect and craft, but something that a lot of people are surprised to find out about are legendary weapons and armor. That's right, there's higher quality versions of a lot of the things that your player themselves has been equipped with for your whole journey up to this point, and the difference between them is honestly pretty staggering. So today we're going to talk about the nine different legendary schematics that you can find in Pal World, as well as showing what they actually create once crafted. Before we dive in though, one quick word of note, aside from the first two more basic ones, the vast majority of these require a simply excessive amount of resources to create, and a lot of the time the actual crafting part takes a long time as well. So while these are quite a bit more powerful than the regular equipment versions, there is also an equivalent cost to them. As far as actually acquiring them then, though, each of these nine legendary schematics is tied to one of the alpha world bosses, the big scary extra strong versions of pals that are out in the wild. When you defeat the correct boss, it has a random roll chance of dropping this schematic. And as far as I can tell, the drop chance is exactly the same whether you kill this pal or capture it in a sphere, so it's completely your choice on how you want to handle it. The thing is, the drop chance itself is pretty dang low, so let's go over a couple of things that you can do to make the whole experience a bit easier if you want to. Before entering your world, you can change the world settings and customize them to be whatever you want. You can go back and do this on the main menu at any point as well. And there are two settings here that are a game changer for this exact farm process. The first is night and day length. The bosses in question seem to respawn once every three to four days of in-game time, so reducing the length of day and night means that the respawn time also gets reduced. The timer on minimum length being right around 30 minutes, as opposed to over double that by default. The second one is pal spawn rate, but this one is a little bit finicky. What this does, literally speaking, is triple every individual pal that spawns in your game. And that does actually include bosses as well. You can fight three bosses at the exact same time stacked on top of each other. For the first few of the bosses on this list, that is actually pretty doable if you overlevel them a bit and have good gear. Killing three at once is just extremely effective for increasing your farm rate as a result of that by literally three times. Three times better farming. But of course, some of these schematics are adopted by actually tough, dangerous pals, and obviously when you get to that point, fighting three of them at once doesn't really work anymore. So you can always just come back out here to your main menu and change it back to one once you're doing those. All this said, the first legendary schematic is the Old Bow. This one drops from the level 23 King Pack a boss located right here near the original starting island. There's no real trick to beating him, it's a relatively easy fight, especially if you're at the point of farming for legendary gear. That said, he is a very approachable fight, even in the low level 20s, and if you get lucky, you could get your legendary old bow schematic from him early on as a result. And this one isn't too bad crafting requirement wise, so you can even have it at that stage too. This is arguably the biggest upgrade from the base version to the legendary version. The regular old bow has 65 attack, pretty pitiful, but the legendary old bow has 247 attack, which is almost as much as the base crossbow, but of course with a significantly faster firing speed because it's a freaking bow. So if you are able to get this one early, it is a pretty massive power boost. On a similar note though, our second legendary schematic is in fact for the crossbow itself. This one has its drop chance from another relatively early game boss, this level 23, Bushi. This is located right beside the southern starting island, and this is actually the only boss on this list that is tied to the little teleport boss rooms rather than being in the open world proper. This one is a bit tougher than King Paka, but not by much given they are the same level. And again, like the legendary bow, the legendary crossbow is much more approachably craftable early on too. As for how it actually compares then, the regular crossbow has 280 attack, and then the legendary one has 490. This is a pretty significant bump for sure, that makes the crossbow work even later in the game over even some of the early proper guns if you manage to get it early on. Talking about guns then, the third schematic today is for the legendary handgun. This one's attached boss is slightly higher level, but not too crazy quite yet, being this level 29 beacon over here near the northern starting island. This one is in a bit of a cave surrounded by other pals. It might make it a bit easier if you clear them out first, but otherwise, aside from the boss being a bit higher level than the other two so far, this isn't very complex either. The result then is of course the legendary handgun schematic once you can eventually get it to drop, and this is an absolutely insane tier upgrade over the base version too, with the regular handgun being 250 attack and the legendary one being 625, so pretty much 
two and a half times the damage of the regular one. But that's not it because the magazine size is also completely doubled, meaning you can fire 16 shots between reloading instead of eight, which is another pretty sizable bonus on this one too. Moving up on the scale of guns, then we have the legendary pump action shotgun schematic. And this one comes from a much higher level boss than those up to this point, which is the level 45 Suzaku located here in the desert at the northeast side of the map. This one fights in a big open area, which means it's harder to find cover to actually hide behind. And the higher level it has, obviously it makes it harder to cheese by just outscaling the boss too. And we're definitely in the territory of not fighting three at the same time anymore. So this is gonna be an actual proper fight that you have to be careful with. The reward though is pretty outstanding if you can make it drop. As for the actual comparison then, the base version of this weapon has 220 attack and eight shots before you have to reload. Then the legendary version is 385 attack with 12 shots. So again, another really massive increase on both fronts on what I already personally used as my main weapon. So this one I absolutely recommend going for. Then we have the next stage in gun-based upgrading technology, the legendary assault rifle schematic. This one drops from the level 49 Blasimut boss located at the southeast side of the volcano, which is on the left side of the map. And it's worth noting that this one is actually like inside the volcano a bit. So the actual entrance for the fight is actually over here on this pickaxe marker I have on my map, where you'll find an abandoned mine shaft entrance leading right over to him. This can be a pretty nasty fight, especially in the enclosed space that you have. So you want to make sure to come prepared. He's a pure fire type, so any water type pals will help you out a ton. But if you keep at it, eventually you will get lucky and find this schematic. So again, let's go over the comparison. Base assault rifle is 320 attack with a 20 round capacity magazine. Legendary assault rifle is a big jump up to 560 with a 30 round magazine. So about a 70% increase over the base version's damage and also a 50% decrease in reload frequency. Very much worth getting long term if you want to. Then we have our final weapon and the big daddy of them all, the legendary rocket launcher schematic. Yep, rocket launchers get better. For these last four drops, it is also worth noting that these all come from the legendary PAL open world bosses. So these are four of the toughest fights in the game. This one specifically then is from Jet Dragon, who makes his home over here, also on the volcano, but on the northwestern side of the volcano, where you can find him zipping around the place, just having fun being a really fast little dragon guy. My advice for this fight is to take advantage of the terrain to block his projectile attacks. And if you have a strong ice pal, this is definitely the place for it as he is weak to ice. Other than that, it's just practice really. As far as the actual drop itself, this is what the base rocket launcher looks like, 10,000 attack, and then here is the legendary version, 14K. That is a sizable increase on already the highest damage singular shot weapon from a player. And if you bring this thing out, it's just a weapon of mass destruction really. It feels bad almost to use, especially on just these tiny little guys that I'm showing you on it. It's just, it's nutty. Then we have our three remaining legendary schematics, all of which are for different parts of your armor collection. First, we have the legendary PAL metal helm schematic, which comes from Frostallion, the legendary PAL boss located in the northwestern side of the giant ice island, which is on the north side of the map. Again, this is a pretty tough fight. Your best bet is to use the terrain as your ally again, and then bring some sort of particularly powerful fire PAL, as Frostallion is, of course, an ice type PAL weak to fire. Once you have the schematic then, again, let's compare. The regular PAL metal helmet, which is the late game helmet for those who don't know, is 150 defense with a 350 boost to your maximum health. The legendary version is 240 defense with a 560 boost to your maximum health, which is quite a lot of value from just your helmet slot. Then finally, we have the legendary schematics for both the cold resistant and heat resistant PAL armor sets, which of course drop very thematically in the same location, specifically right here at the northern edge of the desert that's on the northeast side of the world map. This is the spawn location for Palladius and Necromus, a pair of opposites, light and dark, day and night and centaur form. And of course that is represented with Palladius dropping the cold resistant armor schematic and Necromus dropping the heat resistant armor schematic. These two always spawn in a pair, so you basically get to farm these two legendary schematics at once at one time, but they are also quite tough given that it is a duo fight. My best advice then is to split them up as best you can, your pal having aggro from one, you taking aggro from the other, then just dodge to the best of your ability while getting your damage in. This is a much more open area than the other legendaries are in, so you have to rely more on your actual dodging ability than just tactical positioning, and worst comes to worst, you can just fly around like a coward while you regenerate health. That said, once you have the schematic, the reward is pretty damn powerful. These both have the exact same stats as each other, with the only difference being one is of course for cold areas and the other for hot. But the base version of them has 250 defense and 750 bonus maximum health, whereas the legendary version has 400 defense and 1200 bonus maximum health. So to put it simply, going from a regular palmetal armor and helmet combo, that gives you 400 defense, 1100 bonus health. The legendary full combo is instead 600 
140 defense and 1760 bonus health. That is an insane amount of difference considering the base version of these gear are just the best equipment that you can craft without RNG drops. It's already end game gear and it really illustrates the difference here. This end game gear as far as what you can craft normally and then there's the true end game gear. These things, these legendary items. It's also worth noting that I didn't mention it for each one individually, but the durability of all of these goes up more than double for their legendary versions too, so less repair is required, which is of course quite nice on its own. All in all, this is inarguably the strongest collection of player equipment in the game, and it can be quite an adventure to get it all. It will take you quite a while if you want every single part of it. While you can farm each of these equally, I would highly recommend at least to start with just picking one or two that you really want, as again, the crafting materials are quite hefty on some of them, so it's best to focus on what matters to you the most, be it defense, consistent offense in the form of a more reliable ranged weapon, or just a massive goddamn explosion from a nuke launcher. I hope this guide will be helpful in your journey in general though, or hey, maybe you just wanted to see what the most powerful equipment in the game is actually like. Like if you liked the video, subscribe hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye